everyone, it's Maria Recruit here from All Things Business. And today we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, we all need um, a great influence in our life when we go through tragedies in our life. And sometimes the best thing to do is to write a book or write a chapter in a book. So you can put all your feelings down and other people can read it. And then you, you, you know, you'll have a book with like-minded people. And it's my pleasure. I have a wonderful author, Evie Shaw, who uh, out of tragedy was able to come through and write a chapter in the book, Awakened. Um, so it's my pleasure. Um, uh, Evie is from uh, Louisiana. She's an American. And uh, it's just, it, I just met her actually online a couple of weeks ago. And we've had wonderful chats together. And uh, she's, she's opened up my eyes about a lot of things about numbers and how things happen and symbolism of things that are happening in your life. It could be as simple as a butterfly. Um, so she has a tragedy that she's turned into a book and she's come through it so let's talk to Evie and let's see as a coach life coach if anyone's going through this how she can help hi Evie nice to have you on hi. my show how are you I'm great thank you for having me good my, to be here my pleasure my pleasure so tell us a little bit about um, your background uh, and what made you what motivated you to to write the chapter in the magic of gratitude in the book with alan wade awakened well that it's a great story how it all happened but um so my background first i actually when i was um in high school and I got a chance to tour a college and they said, what do you, what do you want a degree in? I thought I have no idea, but I want to help people. So I ended up getting a psychology degree and then I ended up getting a teaching degree and then I ended up getting a master's in counseling. So I've always had the desire to help people and, um, you know, I wanted to just fix everything. And so that's, that's my background like that. And then, I, so I did teach school and I, then I had my children. And once I had one son, then I had two, then I had three and less than three years. And okay. so I stayed <laughs> home with them and, um, I ended up homeschooling them, which was amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. I loved teaching back then. I mean, mm -hmm. I loved it. And um, then, but teaching with my boys, I just loved it. They were just loads of fun. And uh, so I was able to homeschool them for, I think, 20 years total. Wow. wow. And so, yeah. You were a dedicated mother. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Excellent. They made Congratulations. Easy. They made it so easy. I have told people before that the only reason I would have had to fuss at them is to, because they were laughing too loud or something. So, <laughs> so anyway, they are amazing and lots of fun. And so I, um, I homeschooled and then in the midst of that, um, had my issue that I talk about in the chapter mm -hmm. and, um, then here we are. Yeah. So, um, my chapter actually, it's so amazing. What happened is, um, in February last year, I was teaching school, public school, and, um, I wasn't loving it like I had before, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just at a different point in my life. And so I was listening to all kind of motivational things. So anyway, the, YouTube feed rolled over to Bob Proctor, whom I didn't know, I had never heard of, but when I heard him, I was really drawn to him, at, uh, attracted to what he was saying. And so um, I kind of pursued that and there's a neat story with that, but pressing on. So I ended up becoming a Bob Proctor consultant. And um, so this summer, I was writing a book. I'm like, oh, I'm going to write a book. I was in a book marathon, 23 days to write a book. <laughs> and, and day three, I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, because it's my story. I mean, yeah. I didn't have to come yeah. up with stuff, right? I mean, yeah. it was my story. And so uh, I really laughed. Like, what am I going to do with the other 20 days? <laughs> and so um, in what I did come up with some other stuff, uh, the title, the title of my chapter uh, is called The Gift, The Magic of Gratitude. I also have a different program called The Gift of Gratitude, but this mm -hmm. is 
the magic of gratitude. And so I was, um, wow, it's just, it's just amazing how it happened. So I was writing that book for myself. I mean, you know, just the whole book by myself. And um, because of Bob Proctor, they encourage you to get on Facebook and stuff. Well, that was new to me. I mean, I had been on there for some things with my son, mm -hmm. but so I was on new on Facebook and I met someone who had a green eyed picture and all of us five shawls are green eyed. And so it caught my attention. And so through, so, so I commented on that and that struck up a friendship with us. And through that, I saw Alan and Cindy posting that they were about to write a book and you could put a chapter in it. And I'm like, Oh, wow. I'm writing a book. <laughs> and so, um, I contacted them. And so I went, I mean, it just felt right. It felt like the right thing to do. So instead of my book, I made it a chapter, which that was the first three days of what I wrote. And so it was perfect. It was the perfect chapter. Yes. The perfect size. Now I can make and create my book, which I plan to do. But so that's how I got in the book is kind of a series yeah. of yeah. events and was so blessed to be a part of it. And it became an international bestseller. Yes. So, fantastic. Congratulations. Not bad for first try for a friend yeah. like yourself. You have many, many more books in you, you know, yes. in you. when you yes, start, yes. When you just, the first one's the most difficult, isn't it? It's the most difficult. I think more, like, like just helping out other people who are going to be listening to the show and might want to, they're writers, right. In the making, but they have to understand the first one's the toughest, right. And it does stop like it, it flowed for you. But when I wrote my book, because it was uh, it, my book, um, also an international bestselling, um, you know, bestseller was W income music, social media. So it was, had nothing to do with my life. It had to do with business and, you know, social media. So that was tougher, but I think, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm starting to write a book now about my life now, right? I'm going to have a, you know, have one of the chapters in Robert J. Moore's books. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. Like, I have to find the time to do it because that's what it is. You have to schedule a time to do it, don't you? Yeah, yes. And so the amazing thing was this summer because mm -hmm. I was a teacher, you know, I was at home and, yeah. uh, and also the pandemic. But yeah, so I wrote it and uh, submitted it in their book. And, um, I'm just so thankful because from that I met Robert J. Moore mm -hmm. and from meeting Robert J. Moore, I've met you and 10, yeah. 20, 30, 40 other people. Yeah. And so um, my life has just catapulted into a great direction. And so here I am. Yeah. We're, so you know what? Uh, birds of a feather flock together, like they say. So you start with one person. And, and I love social media because that's where I've met everyone. Right. Right. <laughs> the pandemic, I don't go out at all or just to the store. But so I meet everyone online. It's, and, you know, doing shows like this, it's like I know you. I see right. you. It's like right. I know you. I mean, you've, we've already spoke about two or three times and we'll probably continue to speak to each other. But absolutely. Yeah. Like minded people. Absolutely. So tell me, and people are going to be wanting to know how many hours did it take you to write your chapter and how many how many um, pages were they or how many words um, is your actual chapter? Oh, that's a good question. So, I mean, honestly, I sat down just for three days and mm -hmm. spoke it into my phone. Okay. Which is Great. so amazing. Smart, yeah. Um, even though I love to write, like I mm -hmm. love to mm -hmm. But I spoke it into my phone. And so literally three days later, it was done. Um, it should have, like, it's around 2,500 words. Um, makes sense. Yeah, I'm not makes exactly sense. sure the end count, but somewhere in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. And so, but it was my story. And I've told it quite a few times. I've been asked to speak a few places yeah. um, at that back at that time. Mm -hmm. And so... I didn't have to kind of figure out what am I going to say? I, yeah. I had already, you know, kind of yeah. known. So mine may be very, very different than other people starting to write theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also the, the ones that I write in the future, I think it will definitely take me longer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I'm already thinking, I don't know where to start on one of them. <laughs> and so, now, I do have the magic of gratitude. Um, 
the chapter. And then I do have quite a bit more information to go with that to make my own book. So. Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. I know. I know there's a book in all of us, right? Absolutely. And it has to be coaxed out of us in order to write it. And like I always wanted to be an author and then I got into a program and I purchased the program. So I got some help with it, but really it was up it was up to myself. I mean, I sent it in for them to look at it and, you know, uh, check it over and see if it was good enough or not and find the mistakes. And I've still found lots of mistakes. I mean, so you have an editor working on it, but there's still mistakes. And I still, there's still mistakes in my book. And, and I guess the thing that we have to be aware of that is never going to be perfect, is it? The book is never going right. to be perfect. Never. And I think if you can get over that hurdle, it right. doesn't need to be perfect because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> it can't right. be wrong to do anything, right? Um, right. And, uh, yeah, because I expect that of myself. And uh, that they say for anything, just get started. Don't worry about it. Right. right? Don't be so hard on yourself. We just get started and get it, get it out there. And um, one thing that I've said for a lot of years, a lot of, lot of years, is uh, our hurts can heal other people's pain. Yes, yes. But not until we tell it. Because you can look at someone that you know that you've been, you know, maybe in a group with a long time when it was different when you were in a physical group together yes. and you think, oh, they have it all together. Oh, they have the perfect life. Yes. But what's their story? Yes, you're and right. So I've always, always loved hearing people's story. And I do want to tell my story because I do think people can be healed or maybe propel their their mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. um, I took the long way, <laughs> I took the slow, <laughs> the slow boat to healing. <laughs> and um, so I want to help people propel that. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. And everybody has a story for sure. Everybody has a story. And I remember when my parents died, I had to go for grief, grief counseling. Thank God, yeah. goodness, I went for that. It was 12 weeks, but it helped because you tell your story. I mean, it's a group of people sitting around and I'm very grateful that I was able to go to the funeral home where my parents, you know, were laid out and uh, they offered that because that's what I needed at that time. It's tough, you know, right. um, loss of anyone that you love is very tough. People don't know until you go through it and you don't know about it when you're growing up. Nobody talks about this, right? How do you handle when a significant other in your life passes away? How do you handle it? Nobody talks about it because it's such, you don't want to think about it. You don't want to talk right. about it. Yeah. It's tough. The pain is so great. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what, what I've said to people is, you know, when you see people with gray hair, they've all gone through losses. But they're on the other side now, hopefully, right. and they're still enjoying life. So when I when I was able to say that and see that in other people, because I thought I thought I was the only one who lost my parents. No, everybody has, right? Some of them earlier than I did. I was so fortunate. I was in my sixties when I lost my father. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. that was four years ago. I was so lucky. I was in my 60s that, that, you know, I lost my mom in my 60s, my father in my 60s. So I was already a mature adult, but that didn't make the pain any easier. Not no. at all. But mm -hmm. I think about all those wonderful years I had with them that some people didn't have. So I just felt gratitude right. towards it. Felt gratitude right. towards it. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. For sure. So and now the thing about the grieving process yeah. is you can't go around it. You can't no. go <laughs> no. under it. No. You can't go over it. You have to go through it. Yeah. And so unfortunately, but there is there is life on the other side. That's yes, the good news. Yes. Um and it's hard to see that when you're in their midst. Oh yes. Oh yes. And no matter what anyone would say to me, I mean it just it just didn't do it. I had to find my own route. Like I was talking, I would talk about my parents and I would just start crying. Just in the, in the middle of a sentence with anybody. Now I'm able to talk about it, and like with you, I don't, I don't feel like crying, right? Right. <laughs> you know, right. That's a big step forward as far as it I is. Can. It sure is. But you yeah. talk about it, you grieve yeah. it, and you've come to the other place, the other side exactly. of it. Exactly. So you've got to tell us a little bit about Bob Proctor. I know that I'm sure that must have helped you. So tell us a little bit about your work that you do with people using the Bob Proctor strategy and methodology. Okay. So I, I do offer a course. Uh, it's called Thinking into Results. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing. Um, 
Bob Proctor says that when you do what he instructs in, in any program, but in specifically in thinking and results, that you'll need a telescope to look back on your life in six months from where you were to where you are. And he's so right. Mm -hmm. So I got into it and I, my life has completely changed completely amazingly changed and I've catapulted to a new place and it's all about what we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we don't, I don't think we think about what we're thinking about. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we, don't. we just think it right. <laughs> we think it and then, yeah. So it, 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 it's interesting to think about what you're thinking about. And um, so that is, a, it's a, a 12, module program mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. um it's not necessarily a 12 week program it's uh, actually a six month program and so you go through modules and vi uh, videos and workbook and do the activities mm -hmm. and watch watch you go <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you know Definitely. you soar to high heights and Definitely. so it's super exciting um and so i'm just super excited about the people i'm walking with mm -hmm that are walking through it with me that we're walking through it together and i'm looking forward to other people because the results are amazing mm -hmm. of course so anybody who's ready for a change in their life who kind of want to take wants to take a step up mm -hmm. even though the price tag is a little steep it's mm -hmm. not it's not a cost it's an investment mm -hmm. it's exactly. as if you were putting money um like in the stock market mm -hmm. and you're your stock soared, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just catapulted um, yeah. in, in every area. I mean, it could be finances, it could be relationship, mm -hmm. career, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you're making an investment and you're bound to go up and yes. higher. And yes. if, if you implement what's being taught and mm -hmm. it's, it's really amazing. So. Yeah. And also it's not instant, is it? You have to go through a metamorphosis. Like I know your symbology is the butterfly, right? I love right. that. I love butterflies. And that's a metamorphosis. When you see them so ugly as a caterpillar becoming this beautiful butterfly, there, there's a metamorphosis. And I love that word because that's basically what happens to all of us. Like I, I went through a metamorphosis with my father, mother passing away. And then my sister passed away. And then my husband passed away all within six years. Right. Oh, so wow. a very deep metamorphosis. And then at one point I had to say, you know what, I have to stop grieving. They wouldn't want me to, although I do you know, tear up and all of right. that, that gone, of course, that's normal, but, uh, but they wouldn't want me to, they would want me to get out there and enjoy my life and become the best that I can be because I'll meet up with them sooner or later. I mean, right. Right. So, you know, I love the word metamorphosis and I love your symbology of the butterfly. I really yes. do. Oh. Yeah. Transformation. And that's yeah. what I tell about in the magic of gratitude. Um, I went through a complete transformation. Mm -hmm when my husband left me and um, began to be thankful for different mm -hmm. things that I wasn't thankful for. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, it, it literally changed who I was. I became a beautiful butterfly, if I don't say so myself. Mm -hmm. I just know how much more at peace I was, how much more joy I had, mm -hmm. how I was much more pleasant. And I became a better mom and a better friend and a better person. Mm -hmm. And so um, even though it was a tragedy and it was mm -hmm. um, at that point, my worst nightmare, my worst dream sure. coming through, my worst nightmare. Um, yeah, I mean, I grew so much. I sure. grew so much yeah. through, sure. uh, but through gratitude. So gratitude yeah. was the key. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I didn't realize how. I mean, it is amazing. I mean, it's just, it brings with it so many wonderful mm -hmm. gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so. Yeah, it does. And and people, a lot of people are afraid to start that voyage of transformation. But you know what? I mean, I realized that, you know, I had to grow up. I mean, that's part of growing up. I mean, we all have to grow up. We all have problems. You know, things change in our lives that we can't control necessarily. We try and control as much as we can, Evie. I know, you know, uh, all of us do. Yeah. Of course, some things will happen. I, I couldn't control my parents passing away. I couldn't control my sister passing away suddenly. I had nothing to do with me, right? So, right. I mean, if, to get over the, the sense of guilt, 
the, you know, just, just the guilt. I mean, you know, you hate to see the loved ones going through the pain. Like my husband was cancer, the pain that I was watching, you know, mm -hmm. and going to die anyways. But it's just that we carry so many different emotions when we see someone hurting in our lives or passing away or whatever else. And it does transform us. It can make us either very bitter or like right. you and myself, grateful that we're right. still are still healthy and that we still have a life and that they would be proud of us right yeah. right yeah. right so to further my story you know to mm -hmm. be on what we're talking about here uh when i wrote the chapter um and when i lived through what i what the chapter is about mm -hmm. um it was awful Mm -hmm. It was painful. It was devastating, excruciating, all those things. Mm -hmm. It hurt so bad. And I hurt so bad. Sometimes I thought I couldn't go on living. I hurt so bad. And uh, and it was what it was at the time. And then I began to change. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I wrote the chapter this summer and I finished it, I wrote an epilogue at the end. And mm -hmm. I said, the events in this chapter pale in comparison to what I went through after. Mm -hmm. And yep. so I lost my third son two years ago in April, 2018 to cancer. Mm -hmm. And, um, sad. Yeah, it was, I mean, like going back through that event mm -hmm. of, uh, losing my husband or my husband leaving. Wow. Like, yeah. Yes. That hurt so bad then. And now I'm like, oh, that was, that was nothing compared to this. And so anyway, so. Um, whew, so. It helped me to know how to grieve mm -hmm. better, if there's a better way to grieve. Mm -hmm. um, it helped me to see things differently and to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. and something that Bob Proctor says that's that's huge is um, he says for every, it's a law of the universe. It's not mm -hmm. that he came up with it, but he just tells it in a way that was so clear to me. He says for everything that happens, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when something, something good happens. We have, I mean, when something bad happens, there's an equal and opposite good. Yeah. Yeah. And when something really bad happens, there's an equal and opposite really good. Mm -hmm. And for something really, really, really tragic and, excruciating and heartbreaking mm -hmm. there's an equal amazing wonderful opposite to that mm -hmm. and when i was when i was at the conference in february and heard him say that i'm like that's it yeah yes. that's what i'm gonna do with colson's mm -hmm. uh life mm -hmm. or death mm -hmm. um as tragic as it was to me i want it to be that great Yes. Also. Yes. Also. Yeah. And Colson lived that kind of life. He he's here 17 years, but mm -hmm. he was amazing. He was a fighter. He was a karate a black belt in karate. And he just never quit. He never gave up. He never never complained. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he went through different things in his life before the cancer, but he was strong. I never saw him as anything but just this amazing kid that didn't quit mm -hmm. and, um, and he touched so many people's lives mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I trust that as many as he touched when he was here he can touch that many or more even still and you know that's the one thing when I realized when my my dad passed away I didn't realize how many lives he had touched because people would come up to me saying oh I know your dad I loved your dad I didn't even know this. And so many people knew him and loved him. I thought, oh, my God. Or even when I was taking care of him, because I was his uh, daily caretaker, right? I, I moved in with him to help him out for about two and a half years. And I didn't realize how many people he knew and how many people would come up and, you know, reminisce with him. They just loved him. So you don't know, right? I mean, I, and you know, when, when I think about myself, I wonder who's going to miss me or how many lives I've touched. Because I don't right. think about it, right? It's like you, Evie. How many lives will you have touched by the time we're, we're through with all of this? You right. know? Right. Yeah. Right. Wow. And I've always thought, of, I have thought of that long before I lost Colson, but I mm -hmm. thought a, a, a man that was um, at our church and he was most likely going to pass away. He had 
uh, type of cancer. And I said, let's celebrate him while he's here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. He's gone. And so I guess that's good for all of us right now. Who in our life did we need to celebrate? Yes. You know, maybe call them and tell yeah. them or text them and say thank you. And yes. um, and why not? Why not sure. tell them while they're here and able to enjoy uh, hearing that? So I yeah. agree. Let's celebrate now, right? Right. For sure. We don't know. If, if we could both pass away tomorrow, Evie. We, would, we don't know. We don't know. Nobody knows. Oh, this show. Yeah. yeah, I could finish a show, go out because I'm planning on cycling. And guess what? I get hit by a car or something. We don't know. We don't know. So, I mean, it's, it's been wonderful talking to you. So, Evie, how can people get a hold of you? And how can they buy your book, your chapter of the book? Can you tell us, please? Yeah. So, um, there's two ways. Awakened is the name of the whole book with all the different uh, authors in it. And it's a great book. The It's from tragedy to triumph. So there's, there's amazing stories in there along with mine. And so that's on Amazon. So they could look up Awakened on Amazon. And um, also, if someone would want to contact me personally at liveyourdreamev at gmail.com. So that's my email. Yes. I could see about getting them a copy and maybe Wonderful. emailing it. Yeah. Um, and I have a website and it's pretty much up. There's probably a few things, but they can still get a hold of me now at www.liveyourdreamev.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. And that tells about uh, my Bob Proctor programs. There's mm -hmm. actually two mm -hmm. and uh, some just um, private. Um, coaching or, or consulting that I can do uh, aside from those. And so that's, that's it. Live your dream, Evie.com and gmail.com. I love it. I love it. And you know what, everyone, uh, you can find Evie on Facebook. So you'll see, you'll see the spelling of her name and you can go and, and get in touch with her because that's how I get in touch with everyone now is on social media. Otherwise I'd never meet you. Right. right but I, right. I want to thank very much Robert J. Moore with sending you my way and having me interview. I really enjoyed that. So I'm going to say goodbye for now, Evie. And thank you. We'll have to get you to drop by when you write your next book. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And if anybody wants to contact me, feel free. I do want to uh, help somebody who's in the darkness or give give hope. Yes, yes. Thank you. And we all need that. Thank you, Evie. Talk to you, you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Wasn't that wonderful, Evie Shaw? Uh, a lovely, lovely lady. She had a number of tragedies in her life and she's come through and she's all smiles. What a lovely, lovely lady. Uh, you must get in touch with her. If, you, if you're going through these hard times, you may need a coach to help you through it. We all need coaches to help you through it. So uh, for now, I'm going to say goodbye. And if you want to get in touch with me, it's Maria Recruit All Things Business. You can find me on all the social media channels as Maria Recruit. And um, until next time, keep well, keep safe. Uh, this is October the 22nd, 2020, and we're going back into the second phase of COVID-19. So please keep very healthy and keep safe. I'm going to say goodbye now. Take care. Bye-bye now.